Another objectionable motion that you'll encounter is known as the direct or hidden fifth or eighth or uh, eighth or octave. Um, so you'll you'll notice that fifths and octaves are uh, the source of a lot of headaches, and that's something to be aware of when you're doing any sort of uh, part writing. And the direct fifth or direct octave uh, are focused on the outer voices. So we're talking about the bass and the soprano line. Some of the some of these direct fifth and octave motions, if they involve one or both of the inner voices, it's a little bit more acceptable because uh, it, it's technically a little bit more hidden because it's in an in, in inner voice, If at least if one of the voices is uh, in the inner voice, one of the motions. But let's let's address it first when uh, what would be considered a typical direct octave. So in this essence, in this case, you're moving in similar motion to an octave. You'll see an octave here. If you're leaping in the soprano and leaping or moving by step in the bass, Okay. If the roles were reversed, if you're moving by step in the soprano and leaping or moving by step in the bass, this would be okay. But in this instance, you'll see you're leaping from G to C and moving by from B to C in the bass into this octave. That's considered a direct octave, and you don't want to do that. If we were to switch this, put the B to C in the soprano, and the G to C in the bass, this is perfectly acceptable and extremely common uh, motion that you'll find in uh, in four part writing. So that's uh, so this is okay as it is currently. If we were just to simply switch that back to where it was before, not so much. Okay, not not an okay thing to do by leaping in the soprano to an octave with the bass. If and it didn't matter if the bass was leaping or moving by step. Uh, to avoid this, try to move by step in the soprano. Now, an objectionable fifth, uh, or rather a direct fifth, let's see if we can create one right here. Now, the direct fifth is just like the uh, direct octave, where you're moving from, uh, from one, uh, one voicing to a perfect fifth in the outer voices, so the soprano and the bass. So you're moving by, in similar motion, and you're leaping in the soprano and moving by step or leap in the bass to a perfect fifth instead of an octave, that's considered a direct fifth. So you'll notice here, we have a perfectly fine F major harmony in first inversion, and going to a uh, G major harmony, so uh, Roman numerals, this would be four, six, going to five in reposition. Uh, and it otherwise looks okay, but you'll notice that we're leaping down to a D in the soprano, and we're moving by step down to a G in the bass. This is a direct fifth because G to D is a perfect fifth, and we're leaping to that fifth in the outer vo in the soprano, and moving by step. It could, this could have moved by leap, and that would have also been uh, a poor um, motion in the bass. So this instance is showing you a direct fifth. So avoid direct fifths and octaves at all costs if it uh it really only happens in the outer voices